What is good guys, it's Ray J back with another video and in this one I'm going to be talking about the SPY, the NASDAQ, the QQQs and the futures, everything you need to know about the future and what you should be watching for for tomorrow. Now before I break anything down, before I get into any more details, I do have to mention a couple of things before starting. Firstly, I'm not a financial planner, so take none of this as financial advice whatsoever. And also, if you guys can, please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this. It not only benefits me, but benefits the entire community as a whole. And the last thing is, if you guys can, please check out the Webull link down below and in the description. If you sign up for Webull, the link down below and deposit any amount of money into the account, you're guaranteed up to 12 free stocks, each worth up to $2,000. And the best part is, any could be a free Tesla share, a free Apple share, or a mix of all of them. It's a limited time offer the offer ends in just one week check it out before they run out with that out of the way let's get on with the video looking at spy this thing's down about 0.36 percent for the day and we are actually starting to respect this uh wedge that's just about right here now looking at it it's not looking very strong right now we're seeing a big decline in volume and one thing i did note was the fact that the majority of uh, institutions are still loaded up on puts and it looks like they really want to make that money so they are actually causing this thing to downtrend now now overall if we look at the setup it is still looking more bearish than bullish because of the fact that there's less volume and on top of that we are starting to see a downtrend being respected and i do believe that it's very likely for us to see even new levels to come down to now why do i believe this well looking at the overall setup we have a very textbook looking push to the upside followed by a retracement and the first key level to watch for is that 0.236 fib level around that 388 level i do believe spy is going to likely retest this 388 to 390 zone pretty quickly over the next uh, couple of days maybe by tomorrow or the day after and on top of that we have a very short week for this week you can't forget the fact that we have thanksgiving the market's going to be closed for that and also the market's going to have half a day or like less than half a day i think it's going to be a very short day for friday so we basically have only three full days we only finished one of them so far only two full days left in this market before the whole weekend comes and i know there's going to be lots of profit taking a bit of a slowdown not as much volume not as many buyers and this will likely cause the market to slow down looking at what's going on though i just wanted to note something else that's important uh if you look at some other indicators out there you will see that if you look at the dollar index this thing is starting to uptrend so it does look like this thing got a bounce off its support zone right about here i mentioned this previously uh we got to bounce off this 105 level and i mentioned that if this thing truly bounced we could see the market continue to come down and that is what ended up happening this thing's up almost one percent it's going to likely continue to slowly push its way up and i believe this means that the market is going to likely see a slow bleed looking at apple just real quick the overall trend is still kind of choppy here and there but it is starting to slow down because on the five minutes first off there's less volume that's the first thing worth noting and if you look at the overall setup it does look more bearish than bullish you guys can see we got a big rejection off this it looks very distributive and when that happens we tend to see more and more and more of the market makers push this thing down so it looks like it's going to get a double bottom like formation we're going to see this 146 level relatively soon and i do believe that apple has more downside to come now looking at the qqq this thing is very similar Look at this 280 zone watch that very carefully we could also go as low as like 179 relatively soon we're down a little bit more than the spy which is more weakness from the tech sector and this was actually pushed by tesla i'm going to show you guys tesla in a couple of minutes but because of how tesla's performing because of the weakness we are seeing we're, we are seeing a big continuation to the downside this overall setup kind of looks like a head and shoulders it's a little bit uh, messed up but you guys could kind of see it we have the left shoulder right shoulder in the head and it is slowly starting to come down i believe we are going to see this thing hit this 280 level very very soon again followed by that 179 zone so watch that very carefully i also believe that this is going to cause the nasdaq to come down and it's going to be also because of tesla when i talk about tesla where is it i have it right here tesla's not looking good all right the problem with tesla is we had a demand zone around this 180 to 176 level right here we were supposed to see the buyers come in i was hoping for a bounce i even mentioned this earlier i was hoping for a nice bounce the buyers did not come in from the very beginning the moment i saw this open below 176 and hit like 175 i was like that's it this thing is going to come down pretty hard the next zone i was watching for was that 175 not i'm sorry not 175 167.5 it's about 168 that zone is what i was talking about previously however the support is not very strong there 
the real strong support, at least one key demand zone, is that psychological 150. And I do believe Tesla is going to hit 150 to 156 relatively soon. I also believe that there's no guarantee 150 will hold us, but just to be safe, we're just going to talk about that for now. If it breaks 150, we could see this thing hitting the 130 to 136 level. That's where the next major demand zone is. One of those two will be tested very soon, in my opinion. Most likely 150. I mean, of course, 150 is going to be first, but I do believe we're most likely going to see 150 very, very soon. Now, when it comes to the overall market, we're seeing some green here and there, but the majority of things are still kind of red. The VIX actually dropped with the market, which was kind of surprising to see because the market was overall still more bearish than bullish. But you guys can see right here, we have this nice double bottom like formation on the VIX. Could the VIX come a little bit lower? I mean, I guess it could, but I'm still anticipating a nice bounce. This thing is a little bit oversold, I would say. Not extremely oversold, but a little bit. And we could see this thing balance and get a retest of this 24 level. Break above that, and we could see the 25s followed by 26.93. It's another key zone to watch for. So in my opinion, VIX looks like it's set for a bounce very soon. It's been a while, and I want to see this thing push up a bit. And that is going to cause the market to likely come down. On top of that, uh, we're seeing Amazon once again coming down, down about 1.78%. And if you look at this on a daily perspective, we could see this thing is slowly starting to downtrend. Now, what we could actually do is we could take our uh, handy little Fibonacci retracement and look at where under the Fib levels are. For Amazon, I'm seeing the 0.786 potentially being tested, and that's going to take Amazon to that 89 level. So we could see this thing slowly push up. A little bit from here since we have a long wick on the daily then start to come down maybe we retest like 94 quickly then we start to come down again and then i do believe this thing could slowly 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 approach 90 to that 89 level i think that's where amazon's going to end up going to maybe this week so i am still a little bit more bearish on that it's not a crazy big drop but it is very possible to see this thing come down there and if that doesn't hold right we also have this gap down here there's also a gap around 89. We could actually see that get filled. On top of that, uh, there's AMD. Once again, it's starting to downtrend after that big move that I was talking about. And we can actually talk about some key FIB levels if you want, because that will help us understand what this thing could end up doing. We could either start here or we could start down here. I want to just note something real quick. That is, if you look at this from the very bottom to the very top, this thing has the potential to come to... Let me just make sure that this is right. There we go. This thing has the potential to retest 69 very soon, break below that. I'm going to be watching that 67 level where the 0.5 retracement is. Very possible to see that, guys. So please watch it very carefully. So anyways, that's essentially what I have for this video. We're seeing the 10-year treasury yield pushing up a bit. We're seeing more money being allocated right here. Once again, another bearish signal for the market. Not super bearish. It's just barely in the green, but it's a little bit bearish, right? But anyways, that's what I have for this one. Please have an absolute incredible rest of the day. I want the best for everyone and be ready for a bit of a downtrend to be respected in this market overall. Thank you for listening. Have a great rest of the day and I'll see you guys in the next one. The market to the moon because the long-term future is still incredibly bright and peace out.